Sure, that's the point. Right. Okay, so we want more power. We want to feel like it's easy power and we want to start rushing the downswing. Today's video is going to be a very, very simple drill that we can really start to work to to stop rushing the downswing. I'm first going to talk about common factors that I see of people that do rush the downswing and then talk about a simple drill how we can get this, the body, a bit more active so we can feel like it's smoother, easier power. This video is all about how we can stop rushing the downswing with driver, but we can actually apply this theory to absolutely every single club in our bag, anything that we're going to hit with a, a full out motion. Now, let's firstly kind of categorise the kind of motion that I see when people are rushing the downswing. Well, very often that I, I see a rush downswing that feels unbalanced and it's almost happened without that player knowing, is when the downswing is very much driven with a fast hand movement from the top. So from transition, from backswing to downswing, their movement, their movement is very much driven with a fast, vicious hand motion. Okay, does this feel like you? Do you feel like you initiate your downswing with the feeling of the hands first? Because it looks pretty much like this. Very, very fast, very unbalanced, and very static through the shot. Really driven with the upper body and the hands. And with that, it creates inconsistencies, off balance, and overall, that feeling of it happening and you're not really under control of the club face. So how can we actually change that on its head? And how can we start to make sure the arms and the body are starting to work in sync and we can start to initiate that downswing better? Well, first off, I want to do a really simple drill. If I kind of classified your movement of somebody that rushes a downswing as a short, sharp motion, and you can hear the club as I do that. You can hear it short and sharp. If I was somebody that initiated my downswing with the lower body first and had a sequence of events, so if we look at all the top guys, they start from the ground up, listen to the difference this makes. Okay, or I could be short swoosh or long. So the reason why I want to initiate that and show you that is that if you're someone who's short and sharp and fast with the hands to initiate a downswing, feeling the swing is rushed. That swoosh that we make is very, very short. I kind of classify that as that area there. If I'm somebody that starts with the lower body first, I have that ability to create that swoosh that lasts a long way. So in simple terms, I want to create a swoosh that lasts a long way. So from shoulder height to shoulder height, not from shoulder height to the ground, because that's going to lose all our power. It's not going to maximize how far we're hitting it. And it's really not going to make a very conducive to consistency. So why would you want to initiate the swing from the ground up? Well, ultimately, even though a swing that looks a bit more balanced, looks very kind of easy, a little bit like Ernie L, is going to potentially create a lot more power than somebody that's just moving in this motion. Because if we look at all the top guys, they use the ground, they have a sequence of events. And if we have a sequence of events from the ground up, that's really going to help us create a chain reaction, which in essence, we're going to hit it further easier. So how could we do a simple, simple drill to get this starting the downswing and less likely to be like this. So that feeling of starting from the ground up. As you can see, I placed an alignment stick through my belt buckle. And this is really just to show yourself and give yourself a perception of what this lower half is doing. I want you to take your focus of the start of the downswing from here to a feeling as though we get this belt buckle working towards target. And this alignment stick gives you a good perception of that. So first off, I want you to do this with one hand on the golf club, one hand on your right shoulder for a right-handed player to the top, create that long swoosh and really see how this belt buckle or this alignment stick moves around, it gathers and again, it's okay, number two and then one more for the three. So I really quite, I really felt there's quite a kind of aggressive movement from the lower half to start my downswing. And this will be kind of more aggressive in a drill in one handed like that than it will appear over the golf ball. But we want to create easy, long power. And if we've got a chain and a sequence of events, we're going to start to create that. Just looking at this in a little bit more depth before we hit this away, we want to create in our downswing, which creates a lot of power, a big stretch between the lower half and the upper half. If we're someone who starts our downswing in this motion, we're not creating that big stretch between our hips and our shoulders. It's called an X-factor stretch. Imagine a coil. The more you coil that up, 
the more you release it, let it go, the potential for more power, more speed, more distance. And for me, it creates a lot more consistency as well. You guys that try and hit it hard just with the arms, we know we can miss it left and right. We hit it hard by creating a bigger stretch, lower to upper, we know we can start to hit it a long distance very, very easily. So okay, we've got three golf balls here, we're gonna do two golf balls with this on, really trying to feel as though we get the hips opening up to initiate the downswing, as opposed to being in this motion. Okay, we're gonna do this in gear two, and if you watch my other videos, we know that gear two is a slow gear, so imagine your gears in your car, gear one will be the slowest, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five. So we're gonna go gear two, gear four, gear five, and really give you a feeling and a perception of what the body's doing, as opposed to going at it full whole hog straight away. It's gonna be a quite an aggressive, different move, so it's better to learn it slower, and apply it to the golf ball there. Okay, I really like learning on the ball, so doing it at slower speed is really, really nice. So gear two. Tell you what, gear two, that was absolutely pure. Straight as a die. Oh, I should just hit it like that more often. So the great thing about that is I've hit a ball away, I've created the same motion, but at a slower speed. It's not a stopping drill. I like this as a really flowing motion because that's what happens in the golf swing. Okay, gear four now, not full speed. I'm gonna classify this as 75%, in other words, swinging through. Really trying to feel like this starts my downswing, the lower half. That was absolutely clean. I always say it matches this every time, but I should really practice with that because for me, it also is another thing. I, I get very static with these hips. This really gives me some good focus and getting them out of the way. Really good for my game. Okay, finally, full shot. Get rid of the alignment stick. This is your shot on the course. So if you're tailing a practice session, two with, one without. To really help you blend it out onto the golf course. Grip it in. Shuffle. Really give yourself a feeling what we're trying to do. It's not short and sharp, swoosh. It's a long one. So there you go. My top way you can stop rushing the downswing. Change that focus from the arms initiating it, get the lower half doing it, really creating a good X factor stretch between the lower and the upper. That's exactly what we need to do to create a good, efficient, powerful downswing, okay? We're gonna hit longer drives and we're gonna apply that with all clubs as well. Finally, thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and thank you for watching. See you tomorrow on Alex Elliott Golf.